Right. So there's not going to be any silly introductory sketch or Python ripoff or falling down or hilarity. But what you are going to get is the chat from Broke on the Range. And together, we will finally be able to present to you a tale of two bakers. <laughs> Right, right. I said stop it, okay? No, no, take that diaper off. Seriously. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, we asked him to do one thing. <clears throat> be a target. And he decided to rip all his clothes off and prance around. <sighs> right, anyway. The video. Today, we have a comparison of two reproduction Baker rifles. Viewers of the channel will be quite familiar with mine, which is a rifle shop reproduction made by myself with the parts provided by that vendor. The chaps was made by Peter Dyson in the UK and differs a little bit in its cosmetic appearance, as well as the style of rifling found inside the barrel. Well, we thought it might be interesting to have a bit of a discussion and do a bit of comparative shooting. The discussion is a bit of a rambling tale, talking about how each of us came to own our very own Baker rifle. We hope you enjoy that and the shooting and try to ignore our friend who insists on running around in his underwear. Anyway, oh, yes, <clears throat> I am indeed wearing a fetching pair of green trousers. Yes, they can be a bit of a distraction. The scheme for the shooting comparison was thus. A 10 round grouping shot from the prone supported at 50 meters and a three-round rapid practice from the standing position also shot at 50 meters. The target used for the practices was a miniature version of the well-known figure target as illustrated in Ezekiel Baker's 23 years practice and observations with rifle guns. The original was mounted on a screen that was six foot square and a version was used in the channel's presentation on the rifleman's qualification of the 95th rifles in the Napoleonic era. The miniature version measured 15 and a half inches square, which would make it an approximation of the same target at about 250 yards. The range of 50 meters was chosen as this was a limitation of Fab's range. The ammunition they used was of two types, though both used similar components. The 10 round grouping was shot with loose patch and ball, as the lack of time constraint made that the obvious choice. The ball is 0.593, the patch is 22 thousandths thick, lubricated with shortening, and the charge was 95 grains of 2F. The chap used a similar combination. So, uh, these patches are uh, pre-lubed, ox yoke, very good stuff, and 0 0.600 lead balls, when cast, and regulation 95 grains, in this case Swiss number 3, is roughly 2F. The rapid practice was shot with the Masserone cartridge. Details regarding it can be found in the series on Baker cartridges featured on the channel. I thought first to tackle the deliberate grouping practice. Things were set up without difficulty if the weather was somewhat wintry. The firing point I had was quite comfortable and the first rounds down range were shot without difficulty. I went down to examine the target and you can see how the hits here are a little bit high that uh, my rifle set it to 100 yards. So when shooting at 50 meters stands to reason it would be a little bit high. Uh... For some reason I had it in my mind that I was only to shoot three rounds for the grouping practice. This of course was not the case and our agreement was to shoot 10. So although the shooting was of reasonable standard it would have to be shot again. 
I came to this realization during the evening and shaking my head, selected a different firing position. As after shooting was completed, the weather became somewhat less agreeable. The next morning, with better weather, I followed a similar setup in the new location and settled down for the proper 10 round grouping. After the uh, <clears throat> ball bag was replenished and the supply of patches was made accessible, I settled down to shoot the proper 10 round practice. I used the equipment in the way that it was intended, in that a supply of bullets was carried in the small pouch. Now, Baker ammunition is a surprisingly complex topic with combinations of loose patch ball, pre patched ball, both unpatched and patched ball cartridges being used historically. More information on that can be found in the aforementioned series on the channel. Now the agreement was to shoot from the prone using a rest as it was a test of accuracy and the resting of the rifle with an object at hand was, although not prescribed for the recruit, seemingly, at least anecdotally, historically accurate. The loading of loose patch and ball, when done without constraint, can be a rather long process. Powder from a measure, cartridge, or the historical flask being placed in the barrel, and then the fiddling with the loose patch and ball, can certainly see the seconds add up. As shown here, when shooting in a deliberate or non-constrained fashion, I typically prime from the flask. This holds the same 2F powder as I use for the main charge. Although there probably is a very slight difference between using that and the finer, say, 4F for priming, the material differences are very minute. A few moments later. I found that the 10 round practice chugged along without any serious issues. The patches were all newly lubricated, which is a benefit when using shortening as I do as the primary method of lubrication, and the flint was slightly used but in good repair. As you can see, however, this doesn't alleviate a slow ignition from time to time, as fouling, disposition of the powder of the main charge, and atmospheric conditions can all play a role. Generally speaking, however, the lock time of my baker is well within the confines of what I would consider respectable and acceptable parameters. Well, the weather's certainly better today. Let's see if that affected the shooting. Hmm. And now for the chow. As you can see here, the chap shot in somewhat different circumstances. That said, the main aspects of our comparison were met. Shooting from the prone and using a rest in the military style with the back of the hand supported. The loading scheme was also somewhat different. He used a common, though not a historical military practice of one, using a device to ensure the touch hole did not become a foul while loading. Commonly a toothpick, but in this case, a metal wire was used. This and the obvious step of priming after loading, which for the deliberate shoot, we both adhered to. As we can see here, the chap used a small priming flask with fine powder. His rifle fired reliably, and the lock time generally was decent. Much like my own experience, the odd shot could be somewhat affected by slow ignition. Surely they a cause for the use of correct follow-through.
Okay, so that concludes the 10 round careful series. Uh, she's a very, very dirty girl. Had a bit of a problem at the end. The uh, flint started to get a bit blunt, so I'll have to replace that before I do the rapid series. So uh, I haven't looked at the target. So let's bring it back and see how the, uh, the old boy's doing. With the deliberate practice over, it was on to the rapid. The idea was to test and time a three round practice using the Masserone cartridge in both of our rifles. For my practice, I adhered to the historical practices associated with loading. The obvious utility of the pattern of cartridge in this setting was certainly appreciated. It might be interesting to note that the historical loading drill for the Baker was in fact with the rifle positioned between the legs. This afforded the ability to place both hands on the ramrod, a necessity due to the considerable effort needed to ram the patched ball. The practice moved along smartly. I loaded somewhat historically out of the pouch, and the cartridge performed as expected. As long as you don't rumple the paper too much, once the priming is done and the cartridge is upended in the muzzle, no attention needs to be put to waiting for the powder cylinder to empty. It simply sits at the muzzle, held by the patching, and empties on its own while you draw the ramrod. For me, I ended up with the reasonable time of 1 minute 7 seconds. The chaps rapid practice used a similar method. He was however unable to observe historical practices regarding loading and therefore had to take the time to prime separately after loading. He also chose to maintain the use of the touch hole prick throughout. It's a bit tricky putting the rod exactly on the tip. You've got a big clump of cloth and wax. As the chap mentions here, this one aspect of the Masserone cartridge bears mention. If too much material is used to make the patch, then once sewn, it all comes together at the top of the round ball. It can, once lubricated, become a rather large sloppy mass of greasy fabric that can make ramming somewhat more difficult than it would otherwise be due to the ramrod not having a good point on which to force the ball. Uh, 95 grains of Swiss 2. It's 3. 2F. Uh, What she looks like. She'll clean up fine. The chap turned in a time of 1 minute 47 seconds. Now we'll turn our attention to the results. Well, can't say I'm super happy with that, but uh, that looks more like a 100 yard group rather than a 50 meter one. Uh, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well, what's that? Eight hits, two misses. They really all should be on the figure, though. I'm not going to lie. I was most disappointed in the group. As mentioned, the rifle is capable of this kind of result at double the range. The chap's results were much more promising. He's looking a bit ill. One, two, three, four, five. And then all the rest in there. I'd say he's dead, Jim. By far the lesser of the two efforts, my group had a figure of merit of 2.28 inches with a group size of 6.02. The chap's group had a very respectable figure of merit of 1.33 inches and a group size of 4.37. Well done, the chap. As for the rapid practice, we both benefited greatly from the use of the Masserone cartridge with its integral patched ball. So here's the results from the three round rapid. We got one down here, two, just missed a figure, and it looks like the third blew out the other two holes that uh, were part of the grouping. Went through the middle, blew the old patch right out of there. So I guess that's one hit on the figure. For me, a time of one minute, seven seconds, with two hits on the paper and one on the figure. So, he's a very lucky chap there. One, two, and three. The chap turned in a time of one minute 47 with three hits on the paper and no hits on the figure. So, there it was. We thought a simple comparison of our two rifles using two commonly applied criteria, accuracy and rapid shooting, would be interesting. This concludes part one of the project. We hope you've enjoyed the video thus far. In part two, we'll sit down for an intercontinental chat and discuss our bakers, our shooting, and some future goals regarding this storied arm. If you'd like to support the channel, please stop by our Patreon page. The link is in the description below. And for more information on projects and updates between videos, Follow us on our Facebook page.